I didn't mean to do that. That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to start there. Hang on. I'm doing it. We're learning on the job. We're such amateurs. What's up, what's up, what's up? This is the By Steve Unedited podcast. We are on part four of SAS. Scotty is on site, or he's not. He's in Scotland. Say hi. What's up? We are on Zoom. We are taking the podcast to the next level. Lots coming your way, lots to talk about, lots of exciting updates. So it's not just the By Steve podcast anymore. It's SAS podcast, and it's You Got This podcast all rolled into one. What? Podcast My angle. Somebody what was that, sorry? Podcast Bukaki party. What? My camera angle is dog shit. You can see both of my chins that I brought back from Italy. Um, <laughs> don't yeah, laugh at you, me. You've got the bad angle. I've got the bad lighting. We'll work on it. It's all yeah, good. man. We're going to be professionals by the end of 2024. Um, so let's hit the ground running. Two, oh, just over a week back. Do we get back? No, it's two weeks. We got two back weeks, from two weeks tomorrow. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks tomorrow. We got back from Italy. We came sixth in the over 40s category of basketball. Um, and let's reflect. Go, Scotty, tell me your reflections about Pissarro. Pissarro, so, Pissarro for me was, I, I loved it. I really, I really, really <laughs> loved it. I thought the place that we stayed was awesome by the beach, the weather. Um, the basketball was pretty good considering what we had. And I spoke with a few other guys about this. And although we finished six, six, I think that was probably right. With the team that we went with, with the injuries we had, if we'd have got higher than six, obviously it would have been amazing. But I think six was a fair reflection on us coming back with who we, what we had personnel-wise, what we had injury-wise, and what we were asking people to do with their roles and what, what, what sorts. Okay. I I think I well no I didn't think I know I agree with that. Um, I did a a short synopsis a couple of when pretty much when we got back straight away, and while I was I suppose disappointed in parts, I think taking a step back from it, like like you say, the squad that we had, the people that we went with, the challenges that we were kind of dealing with in those situations, six is really, really respectable. Like we had six or seven guys playing close to like 20 24 minutes and they had like two or three of us probably playing like 30 to 35 i think by the time we got to that last germany game we were just done like annoyingly so like i remember being stood on the three throw line getting ready to rebound telling myself that i wasn't tired i was tired um well, I was what, really tired. what i've been saying to people was and i've kind of ran this through with quite a lot of people, but like we're asking you to be a five man. I mean what what are you in a good day? Six six? Yeah. So six six, six. on a good day with a wee bit of spiky hair. You're we're <laughs> asking you to guard genuine six ten, six eleven, seven footers who are genuine yeah. five men. So that's a big ass straight from the, the get go. Uh most of the games I was guarding a power forward or a forward. So I was guarding yeah. guys six six, six seven, six eight. Um, and then, you know, you're asking guys to do things that are maybe not in their repertoire and having to do them for a long period. Like, there's nothing the matter with me guarding a 6-6 six, six guy for four or five possessions. There's nothing yes. the matter with you guarding a centre on a switch for four or five possessions. But when you're doing it for 35 minutes a game, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's taxing on your body. And then also asking people to be offensive threats. Yes, um, but that but that's basketball. That's the beauty of basketball. So that's the chess game that you play. Like guys having to match up with me, guys having to match up with you. They found that hard as well. But the old saying goes is you can't teach height. And if you've got a team, that's it. Of, if you've got a team full of guys that are close to seven foot, that is tough to play against. And I think that's the thing. Like obviously, like I was happy to take on that like adjusted role. Like when we had that conversation before we went to Italy. And I did everything that I could to like get as heavy as possible and as strong as possible and still be able to get up and down the court. And as somebody that's so used to like running freely and having to kind of temper my my speed and my tempo to be able to get up and down for 30 minutes and wrestle these big dudes, like as soon as I got back, I was like, I just want to get back under 100 kilos. 
like I was walking around the first week back, my body was absolutely battered. I felt like I was like out of shape. Like I haven't done any cardio since I've been back. And I said to like one of my clients yesterday, I'm actually scared to do cardio, even though it's only been two weeks. Yeah. Like, but also like my body doesn't hurt. My feet don't hurt now. My ankles don't hurt. My calves don't hurt. So I'm like, oh, life without basketball is quite good. Yeah, but you also got to take into consideration, like, in a normal week, we aren't going to play six games. Nah. You know, nah. like, r- rightly or wrongly, I played basketball on Friday night, which I probably shouldn't have, but... Well, you got, got a back in- hip, so yeah. yeah. I got invited to a, a pro run. Mm. And I was the guy, oldest guy, by about 14 years. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to go. And to be fair, I was actually pretty good, held my own. But yesterday morning when I woke up, the body was aching. But today yeah. it's fine. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably do that every Friday, no problem at all. Yeah. But to play 35 minutes six times in one week with that heat, with a couple of injuries, was a tough ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and I think that's the that, thing. That's what we do. We, that's what we do. You suck it up and you play. Because we're Spartan Warriors. Yeah. Let's have this so, conversation while walking around the reservoir this morning about being able just to suck it up. Like it's a, it's actually a skill set in itself. Yeah. And like, also, you, you do. You make do with what you've got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's, you, we can bitch and moan about what we, di- what we didn't have, but we went with what we did, and we've done, I think, pretty well, all things yeah, yeah. considered. But yeah, 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 coming back was a bit of an adjustment. Again, um, like straight back, like obviously, because I always get delayed on flight, so I was late getting back, straight back into work, and then you're just back into that life of working and trying to make money yep. and grinding. Yeah. Um, it's your hard, man. It's emotional. Yeah. It's, it's tough and uh, a wee bit like, mm. yeah, because um, I quite, I must, I must admit, I quite like going for a walk and getting an ice cream on the beach. I know, right? I, As a, like, I messaged you, didn't I? I was like, yeah. oh, I really miss waking up next to you and like chatting yeah, like, shit in the morning. And... and I think that's what you miss most is you miss that kind of camaraderie with people and having sure. to hang out and shoot the shit and not have real life kind of going on in the background. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what's your what's your reality now? Like when you think about Switzerland next year? Uh, well, I think obviously bombshell of Jesse dropping out for a year. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Can't wait to then, see Canterbury pop up on my uh, listening feed. I mean that does change quite a few things because that's a relationship. That's a I don't know, like a, a comfort. You know who you've got. Mm, you know, you know what you're expecting. But also I'm excited about maybe if it's Liam, because then that's a different philosophy and seeing if you can fit into that philosophy, see how that works. But yeah, just going to see how it is. I'll probably go to camp in September, but I won't participate. Right. Um, Just because I, I, I feel I just want to just, I just want to chill a little bit. I mean, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when I get yeah. there, that when I get there, that might all change. But yeah. I, definitely, I definitely want to come to camp to be around everybody and have that, feeling and going going out for dinner and having a laugh and see who shows up because yes. you know there's a lot of people that be talking about oh i can do that and it's like yeah, oh, yeah, come, yeah. come, come yeah. and prove it motherfucker come and see yeah. what you can do yeah and, uh, it's not for everybody so i'll be at camp i don't know yet if i'm going to train but if i'm going to be playing on a friday night and everything's going all wet going okay then we'll get stuck in and see how it goes then it all comes down to price I mean, yes. Switzerland is an expensive place at the best of times, um, but if it's if it's doable um, financial wise, then I don't see why not. Yeah. Okay. So, Fair enough. I know yours yeah. is a wee bit more complex and complicated to me because you've went from about four different mood swings in the space of a week. Oh, <laughs> the thing is for me, like. <laughs> So just to give a quick, so after the last game, Steve was like, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm never playing again. Blah, 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 blah. I hate basketball. I'm done. I'm done. Then it was, uh, and maybe if I stay in the 40s, then it was, I think I'm going to be there for a practice player. And then it was like, you can see every week, then every day it goes by, you can see it starting to turn more and more and more to be like, I'm going to be there. So the funny thing is, obviously, I'm not going to out it on the podcast, but we had a conversation after the game about something that I need to discuss with Jesse when I see him. And then obviously he quit. 
Well, taking a break. He's not quit. He's, he's taking a break. He's taking yeah, a break. he's taking a break. He res, he's, res, he's taking a sabbatical. But he? that does affect what you were going to talk about. But yeah, 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 yeah. And there was some things that obviously, like I felt like I wanted to say basketball wise, which I was quite emotional about after the game. Those things need still need to be spoken about on uh, a man to man like grown level about certain stuff, and that's fine. I know Jesse will appreciate that conversation when we get round to it. Obviously, like I am 44, and by the time Switzerland comes around, I will be 45. So that means I need to move up, up an age group. Well, you don't need to. There's nothing in the rules no. that says you have to. Yes. But yeah, yeah. The, but the way that yeah, the way that maxis run, I should in theory go to the 45s. I don't want to do that. And I know that I can't stay at 40 forever. Like, I'm not like the bionic man. But you've only got one more year then. I'm 45, so you're all good. Yeah, true. Um, and I think there was an element of, like, obviously, like, when we first thought of going to Italy, it was going to be like, me, you, Tintin, Steph, duh, 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 duh. And I'm like, I just feel like this group has, like, unsaid business that just needs to be locked off. Um, Because that... If that whole group of players that had gone, it would have been a different kettle of fish. Well, uh, as you, know, I you, said, can only do what, you can only do what you can do, yeah. right? Like, we've done amazing with what we had. And I'm just a bit like, I don't want to move up. I'm happy to be a training player for the 40s. And I spoke to Sadie about that. And she was like, you can go to camp in September as a 40. Liam will look after it for that one camp and see what happens moving forwards. And I will see what happens as it moves forwards. Because you've got Mercia what? and you've got Mercia at the end of November, which would be a 40s one anyway, which you would still yeah. qualify for. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, no, oh. there's no point taking a huff about it too much just now. No, <laughs> genuinely, on the last day, man, he was a grumpy motherfucker. <laughs> oh. There was a wee yes. bit more to it, but it's still funny just to absolutely slag him. I don't want to go to the bottom yeah. <laughs> uh, This is my age group. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, so we'll see what happens. Like, like you, like it comes down to money as well. Yeah. Um, life be life, everything's expensive, nothing's getting any cheaper. Um, and unless you know the podcast gets sponsored and someone wants to pay for us to go to Switzerland, well, it uh, will, it will, well, we won't break the news yet, but it is already sponsored. It's just having to sign the paperwork. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, can't wait to see that paperwork and all the money that comes with it. Well, we have to make the money from it, but we do have a sponsor, and you know about the sponsor. It was there in Italy as well, but we won't say it just yet. I feel like I've missed something, but I anyway. Offer, I offered it to you every day. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So that, yeah. that, is a, that is official, but it's not until the actual stuff comes, we won't say it. But yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. No. All right, so um, moving so on. Anyway, let's get out our... Uh... You're back. Why? Why You're... do? You, why do you have council internet? I don't. Know. <laughs> I mean, why did your internet keep switching off? It didn't. It, it was. Did. It was attached you, the whole you, time. You left and came back. But it was like in the top of the corner. It was like it was on. Nah, who knows? All right, as we're saying, moving on from GB Maxi basketball to normal basketball and things that people do that are a little bit strange and weird. And this was a question that I got asked by Steve, and it's, why do people dunk in the warm-up line or attempt dunks in the warm-up line, but that they'll never attempt a dunk or go for it in the game? Well, this is it. I was like, it always makes me chuckle because I obviously I'm not the most athletic. We know that. Like, I do have the ability to dunk every now and then. I'm Like, I'm not going to dunk on anyone. That's fine. But it always makes me chuckle, like, when you see the people in the warm-up line and they're like, yeah, boom, you're like, you're just never going to do that in a game. Do you think dunking in a warm-up line is a show of masculine alpha energy to try and intimidate the other team? I've got I've got two two views on it. So I used to be a high flyer. <laughs> I used to be. So I used to dunk in the warm-up and I used to practice dunks in the warm-up, but I also used to dunk on people in the game. Okay. Now I try and dunk in the warm up maybe once or twice to see if I can still do it. Yeah. But yeah, people definitely, especially somebody smaller like me, like if you look down at the other end of the court and I'm going up and ramming it, people are like, holy shit. I mean, I've never watched you and thought that, but okay. 
Uh, another thing that I do in the warm-up, I don't know if you've noticed this, I shoot left-handed quite a lot. Um, no, I can't say that. Happened. Yeah, I do most of my layups left-handed and I do a good portion of my jump shots left-handed just in case people are watching to throw them off. I'm sure they don't pay attention. Yeah, well, I, well it's something that I do. I always watch the other end's warm-up for a couple of minutes to see who is shooting more, see who's going to the basket and seeing what they're doing. Yeah, fair. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I just I was thinking about it. This, I think about it like not a lot. It doesn't live in my brain, but I was just like, oh, we should discuss this. Like, why do you think people dunk in the warm up line, even though, like, they're never gonna like, dunk like in a game. Like, I we had in recent history history have seen people dunk in warm up lines and they can't catch basketballs. Oh yeah, hundred you know percent. I mean, like, hundred percent. He's just like, what are you doing? What yeah, are you doing? I, I used to use the warm up line to practice and get timing in and try some stuff. Uh, okay, and then now it's just to basically see if I can still do it and stretch out a little bit more. Okay, okay. Um, that, but that yeah, there's, that but uh, there's definitely people you see in the warm up line throwing it down, and then they got on the court and they can't even make a layup, and you're like, yeah, well, or they didn't even make it on the court. Yeah, or the one that I like is people dunking from the left hand side going right but yet they can't do a left-hand layup. I'm like, all right, I'd be yeah, more yeah. impressed if you scored with your left hand before you dumped it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, have you tried your sleep mask? I have tried my sleep mask, and I've had three clients buy it. So we should have been on, like, a commission program. Uh, his council internet is kicked in again. His council internet froze, his big face froze with gammy hands. <laughs> I know. Uh, I have, I've been wearing my sleep mask. Have you tried? Your sleep mask? Yeah, so thank you very much. And three of my clients have bought it because I recommended it to them. So Manta Sleep Mask, if you're listening to this, sponsor us. Manta Sleep Mask is taking over. Yeah. There you go. I, I just buy them for everyone now. Yeah. I haven't put the earplugs on yet. Um, and I don't know. I don't. Okay, you haven't got that far. No, and I don't want to know what you were doing in your sleep last night. That your earplugs end up across the other side of your bedroom. Back. Back. Yeah. Oh, we need to. We need to get a better internet connection for next time. Yeah. Uh, so you haven't got the earplugs yet, but you have the eye mask. Yeah, and I'm scared to put the earplugs in because. I saw your story this morning on Instagram that your earplug was like halfway across the room. Hey, there he is. We're trying. We're no. trying, but Zoom is Zoom is playing up. Okay, there. Oh, it's not going to be the live Steve unedited podcast. It's going to be the Steve edited podcast today. Oh, yeah, that's all right. We need to edit it. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right, Give me something so... to do this afternoon. So obviously being a fellow strength and conditioning coach slash personal trainer slash guru of the fitness world. Okay. Here is some questions. Tell me the worst okay. excuse a client has ever used to not come to training or to leave you. I mean, I feel like you always get like the standard, like, oh, like I'm sick. You know, my nan died, my cat, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Ask me another one quickly and then let me process that question. So we'll come back to that. So I think I'll be, I need, I, well, I'll, I need a tell bit you, I'll tell you my two first. Okay. Okay. So the best one that I've ever had for somebody not turning up for a session was one of my clients messaged me at like oh. half fat, half five in the morning to tell me that his shipping container that was coming from China had yeah. fallen fallen off the boat and was lost at sea and he was currently on phone calls trying to find where this shipping container was. <laughs> I mean Okay. So, okay. So okay. I could no, I can't top that, but one of my clients cancelled a session because they had travelled quite a long way for a date and then had stayed over 
and had not come back. So they were like, I'm I mean, in wherever they were. And you can kind of uh, I assume for, that they... You can applaud them for that one. That, that's a fair dues, yeah. That's a fair dues one. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so what's yeah. the what's the worst uh, excuse you ever one? had for somebody leaving you, like completely leaving you and not having you as a trainer anymore? Um, I think the general one for me, like, I think you see the trend. You have the the standard trends where like someone goes on holiday, and they're like, oh, like I'm not going to book him right now, but I'll I'll contact you when I get yep. back because I haven't got my diary, and you're like, you're not coming back. Um. But I think for me, it's like I've definitely had at least one person who's like, I've got a new job and I'm moving away. And then like literally like two weeks later, I saw them in the coffee shop and they were like, uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just back for the day. Yeah. And I saw them in the coffee shop again. And I was like, Cause she just left. Like it would have been fine. We could have been friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about you? Uh, you, well, you always get that I can't afford it anymore, and you're like, well, I know for a fact you're not going to use the money that you use for PT to save it. You're just going to spunk it on other crap. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the one that got yeah. me, and the one that actually really, really got me, is I had a client who was really enjoyed, really enjoyed training her, and she came to me and she says, "Look, I'm saving up for a house. I'm going to have to cut down my PT." You know, and I was like, no, I totally, that is a genuine reason. I genuinely I understand that. I was like, so what I'll do is we'll keep you doing what you're doing, but you can just pay slightly less. So I liked them and they'd been with me for a long time. Okay. So, so I wanted to keep them and I was like, well, I'll help you. So about two months later, they eventually left. Um, and I was like, all right, well, you, you know, you, and, you know, getting a house is quite expensive these days. So you do yeah, have to yeah, then about another two weeks later, she was training with another PT who charged about four times what I charged. And I was like, that teaches me for being a good person. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, was, he, was he sexy? It was an all-female gym, so I guess I couldn't compete with that. Okay. But I just thought, I was actually doing something. Fair enough. I was letting you still keep your sessions, but only charging you. Let's say she'd done six sessions a month. I only was charging her for four. So she was saving a bit of money, but then she goes and spunks it on somebody else. Joys of the internet constantly just fucking up the podcast. You hear me now? Yes. Ah, there we go. I said the joys of Zoom try to fuck up the podcast. I know, right? I know. We'll uh, we'll stitch it together and make something out of it, yeah, whatever it looks like. That's that's the beauty of it. It's not professional. No, it's. <laughs> Um, it's authentically ragtag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like client client management's always like a an interesting dynamic. Um, From me, I am going to say I'm out, and I'll let Big Bye Steve give you the outro. Don't do, don't 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 do, don't do, don't. I'll see you next time, people. <laughs>